Halo 2 is one of the most beloved FPS games of all time, but its development cycle was stunted by rush deadlines and the insane hype surrounding the game. At E3 2003, Bungie showed off a version of Halo 2 that was significantly different from what we got when the game was released in 2004. Ever since then, gamers around the world have wondered, what if Bungie was given the time they needed to make Halo 2 as they intended? What else was cut out? Well, thanks to the Vengeful Vadim and the Dig Site team, the wait is officially over. When the producers come over and pry our hands from the keyboard and say, okay, you can't touch it anymore, we, we've got to start manufacturing these discs, I think that's the point where we're going to have to stop and that's going to be the end of it. In this video, I'll discuss several of the changes made to the weapons, vehicles, enemies, and levels of Halo 2 in this awesome mod. I played on normal difficulty, which felt just right. I've seen people complain that the weapon balancing was off, especially on higher difficulties, but my recommendation is to play this on normal to get a fun, enjoyable experience. Without further ado, let's get right into this. Let's talk about the weapons. The first thing you'll notice is that the battle rifle is significantly different from the release version. It fires one shot at a time instead of a three round burst, and it doesn't have the digital ammo counter. It feels punchier, like it does more damage. It also has this cool new reload animation if you completely empty your magazine. Replacing the battle rifle as the burst fire precision weapon is the Covenant Carbine. This version functions kind of like the light rifle in Halo 4, oddly enough. Firing the weapon normally results in a quick two round burst, but zooming in makes the weapon fire just one at a time. This was so useful later on in the game, especially when fighting sentinels, it just tears through them. It's great for knocking off brute helmets too. I really enjoy this version of the carbine. Speaking of Covenant weapons, the Needler in this version is so much better than the original game. It fires the projectiles much faster, making it so much easier to get quick super combine explosions. Another weapon that felt much better than the official release was the shotgun. In this version, the shotgun fires five more pellets and it has more knockback. I always felt like the Halo 2 shotgun was so underwhelming. This version is a lot better. In the second mission, Outskirts, you start the level with a silenced SMG that, unlike an ODST, actually kind of works as a stealth weapon. For those who want to enter the stage in loud, epic fashion, the rocket launcher's projectiles fly faster and it feels more like the Halo 1 rocket. The Covenant rocket launcher, the fuel rod gun, is also more fun to use. At medium to long range, the projectiles will stick to the target, then explode. At close range, it functions just like the normal fuel rod gun. One feature that blew my mind was that you can carry the human and the Covenant turrets, just like in Halo 3, except for it doesn't force you into third person and you still move at full speed. It was so fun to run through rooms blasting Covenant with the fully automatic weapons. Another cut feature that made a later appearance in Halo 3 is the Spike Grenade. In Halo 2 Uncut, the Spike Grenades replace Frag Grenades in the last four missions, and they behave kind of strangely. If they hit a floor or a wall, they'll bounce, but you can stick them directly to enemies too. They explode much quicker than frag or plasma grenades, and the explosion is much more powerful. But one of my favorite weapons in this mod was the Brute Shot. It fires these plasma projectiles that explode on contact instead of bouncing all over the place, and it can hold so much more ammo. The projectiles are a little weaker than the official release, but it feels balanced and I had a blast with it. There are several more weapon changes, including several new varieties of sentinel beams. I had a lot of fun messing around with these, but I'll let you discover them on your own. For now, let's talk about the vehicles. In Halo 2 Uncut, Covenant vehicles are the stars of the show. The ghost weapons now fire simultaneously, instead of one at a time, and can overheat, and the boost can overheat as well. The Banshee also fires his weapon simultaneously, and the bomb drops off faster. The Wraith fires similarly now to the plasma pistol, either shooting individual shots or charging up for a more powerful blast. Phantoms are now destructible, which provided tons of joy for me on the bridge at the beginning of Metropolis. Furthermore, you can now drive the Shadow. You know those transport vehicles on outskirts that you only ever see once? Now you can fit allies in the seats on the back and roll through the enemies in style. It also shows up again on later levels too. With human vehicles, the tank drives slower and shoots faster, and the cut Falcon vehicle shows up to pick up marines at the end of the holdout section on outskirts. On Quarantine Zone, the mongoose even appears. It drives just like the warthog and uses the same sound effects, but it was a blast to drive this thing past the hordes of Flood. The enemies in Halo 2 Uncut have gotten an overhaul as well, especially the Flood and Sentinels. Some Flood carrier forms now hold jackal shields, and when they die, you can pick up the shield as a dual-wieldable weapon. This was pretty cool, but it's pretty obvious why this wasn't included in the final game. Then, of course, there are the famous Flood Juggernauts, giant hulking monstrosities that can take a ton of punishment. They show up in several levels, and it's always an oh crap moment when you see one. I really wish these had been included in the original. They really add a lot to the Flood encounters. The Sentinels have a lot more variety too. 
There are several different colored varieties who carry the new versions of the Sentinel weapons. These things were such a pain on Sacred Icon and Quarantine Zone, but I found it much more interesting than just the two varieties we had in the original game. Part of what made the Covenant so fun to fight throughout the original Halo games was their variety. This mod adds some of that variety to the Flood and Sentinel factions too, which makes some of the less fun missions more entertaining. In addition to all the changes to the weapon sandbox, the vehicles, and the enemies, Halo 2 Uncut also makes significant changes to the level design of Halo 2's missions. One of the things that you'll notice throughout the game is that Cortana has a bunch of new dialogue that wasn't in the original game. Blood spores have contaminated the city's life support infrastructure. The filtration systems are overloading. Other than the cut dialogue, here are some other cool changes that I noticed throughout the game. On Metropolis, the tunnel section after the bridge is partially flooded, which is a really cool detail. The Flood Juggernauts show up for the first time in the Oracle. It was a really intimidating introduction to fight these tanky beasts in close quarters. On Regret, you now actually have to fight your way out of the temple after killing the Prophet, which makes sense when you think about it. On Quarantine Zone, you'll get to drive the Mongoose, a fun little gimmick. At the beginning of Uprising, you can now see this elite give some expository dialogue before he dies. Groups have betrayed us. The counselors. This is such a nice touch because in the original game, he still gives the dialogue, but unless you're paying attention, it's really easy to miss because he's just a body on the ground. High Charity features one of the biggest changes in the entire game. Here we can enjoy the cut Warthog run that never was, in all its badass glory. The Halo theme pumps in the background as I drive through hordes of Flood and Covenant. Some of these ramps feel a little janky, like they're a bit too hard on the Warthog, but it's still such a cool experience to drive through this ending, and I really wish it was included in the original game. Since Halo 1 and 3 both had epic Warthog driving finales, this would have been so fitting. I don't even care that it doesn't make sense how a Warthog ended up in this tiny section of High Charity, it's just cool. Finally, on the Great Journey, there's a major change to the penultimate section. Instead of just flying the Banshee to escort Johnson's Scarab, we can actually ride the Scarab to the control room. I can see why this is cut, the moving platform makes landing accurate shots extremely difficult, it can make you a little motion sick, and you end up having to fly a Banshee to the end anyways. Still, it was really cool to ride on the Scarab. Before you enter the control room, you also get the opportunity to destroy these two Scarabs that guard the entrance. Despite the jankiness of riding the Scarab, this is such a cooler set piece than what we originally got. I really enjoyed it. There are plenty of other small changes to the campaign levels, such as the increased presence of drones throughout the game, but I'll let you play it for yourself to find them. Halo 2 Uncut is a really fun look at what could have been. In my opinion, the stars of the show were the new weapons. It was such a blast to tear through hordes of Covenant and Flood with the new variety of weapons. The vehicle rebalances were interesting to see, and the new vehicles were fun little gimmicks, although it would have been cool to see them more fleshed out. The new Flood and Sentinel enemy types were a thrilling addition to the game that spice up the more boring levels of Halo 2. It was really cool seeing ideas that later got added to Halo 3, like the wieldable turrets and the mongoose and the spike grenade. Overall, I really enjoyed Halo 2 Uncut. It's not perfect, but it's a great look at what could have been. If only Bungie were given the time they needed to make Halo 2 as they envisioned it. Until multidimensional travel gets invented, we'll just have to use our imaginations. But this mod gives us more to work with. Huge thanks again to Vengeful Vatim and the DigSite team for their hard work on this experience. If you want to play it for yourself, just look up Halo 2 Uncut on Steam. That's all for this brief video. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace out for now.